name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Should you go shopping for an appliance, you better bet, after you buy the appliance, you're going to be offered a warranty, an extended warranty. Now you've got a decision to make. Is what they're charging you for the warranty really going to balance out with the life of that appliance. And of course, it's not just an appliance. Any high ticket item, you get into big items like an automobile, they're going to really try to sell you the warranty because, of course, the dealer gets a share and the person selling also. So it's a decision. Now, nowadays, the appliances we buy don't hold up as well as the ones we bought in yesteryear. And so we say maybe we do need the warranty because maybe it will not last. Now, how much do I have to pay for the warranty and how many years should I buy it for? That temple in Jerusalem needed a warranty. You see, that, that wasn't Solomon's temple that we were talking about that Jesus said would soon be destroyed. Not one of those giant rocks on top of another, those beautiful, beautiful stones. That wasn't the one. That temple was destroyed. And then, of course, Ezra comes after the Jewish people return, and, and that one was desecrated. And now Herod takes over, and he makes it the jewel of the Mediterranean world. Oh, what a beautiful place it was. A giant place. Those gates of solid bronze, decorated with gold. And the stones, you can call them stones. 36 feet long, 18 feet wide, 12 feet high, and those were the little ones. It was a beautiful, beautiful place, and there on the Mount of Olives, the people could not comprehend how such a beautiful place could fall. And, and so they wanted to know, okay, when is this going to happen? And then Jesus proceeds to talk to the people and the disciples and to say, there's going to be some awful things happening. And they will not just be preceding the sweet by and by. There are going to be some things happening in the nasty now and now. And so it's true today. Boy, do we live in a crazy world. And you can look down the list of the things that Jesus is talking about and say, yes, they're happening now. These are things that are taking place now. Oh, do we ever need a warranty? And we have one at least those who believe in Jesus have one, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there not to keep things from happening, but to preserve us in the midst of them. What do we know about a warranty? Well, first of all, you've got to get the product. You, you can't go into a store and say, you know, I've got an old washing machine and I need a warranty. And they'll say, wait a minute. You get the product and the warranty then comes with the product. It's amazing and a little bit sad. How many people that refuse Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior somehow want to connect with the Holy Spirit. 
And the Holy Spirit is the gift that God has given you through Jesus Christ. It is not for the non-believer. But it's like the person coming in and saying, I have an old refrigerator and I need a warranty. Well, you're not going to get a warranty. There's something that's, that's come out this year, unless it's a joke, and, and I don't, this day and time, I don't know what's a joke and what's not. But they say there's a toy out now for kids to teach them life. That kids need to know that we're in hard times and toughen them up to receive life. And so they have this toy for kids, I understand, that the kids have to assemble. And any way they put it together, it doesn't work. And that will teach them. It's true with warranties. Jesus Christ has to be accepted and followed and then, and then the gift of the Holy Spirit comes. The second thing about warranties is you better get the right one. Both my wife and I drive Toyotas. And it's almost every day, we've got to where we don't even take the calls, but some place calling them Toyota something, and they're not authorized to use the name Toyota, will call us and try to sell us some kind of a warranty that we need. We really need it. And it's not worth the paper that it's written on. The person who does not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will be given other opportunities. There will be other people to follow. There will be other things to follow. And when that person follows those, there can be terrible consequences. Jesus Christ is the only way I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. And so if you wish to have that comfort of God the Holy Spirit, then embrace Jesus. Say, Jesus, I, I'm a sinner. I, I can't do this myself, but you can cleanse me and you can turn around everything that's in me. That's what conversion means. And then I'll have the opportunity to follow you because you will fill me with your Spirit. And if you're not filled with God's Spirit, the tragic thing is you'll be filled with something. You'll always be filled with something. And the third thing is, and maybe this is the saddest of all. If you have the Spirit given you as a gift, as you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you must activate it. If you're buying something in the store and you get a receipt, you've got to keep up with that purchase. You have to activate the warranty. There has to be something that lets God know that this is all real. That you're not playing Christian. And so many people love to play Christian because it looks good. And there's no responsibility. Activate. You say, well, all of these things, I don't know whether they will actually touch me or not. I know I'm living in the midst of them. I know there'll be wars and rumors of wars. I know there'll be flooding and I know there'll be fires. And I, but, you know, so far nothing has touched me and so I can get by. I'll just try to be a good person. The problem is... When the little things become big things, 
Because each person can go through their private hell. And you need God's Holy Spirit to survive. I was talking a few weeks ago with Gigi, the eldest daughter of Ruth and Billy Graham. She's written some beautiful books on anxiety. And, and she said to me, you know, this morning I've, I've been having some difficulty. I thought, well, you, you know, we all say that, don't we? We had a bad morning and didn't sleep well. She said, it's been a rough morning. And then she told me, she said, just a little bit ago, a black bear killed my Yorkie. Now, that's something that happens. But for her, because she loved her dog, as we sometimes love our animals like our family, this was a disaster. And when things like this come, there is no blow that can be eased except through the gifts of God's Spirit. And so, what are we going to do? When the world caves in, either globally or locally or personally, what are we going to do? For God's sake and ours, get the warranty. Amen.